ColbyJack.net is proud to present From the Flames by Tricia M. Wilson. The people of the fire, the Blessa, led by their queens, have ruled the island of Alfea and oppressed the Driva, the people of the ice, for more than 16 generations. With the Drivian king in hiding and little hope on the horizon, the Driva looked to one person to save them from the vile Blessa, the Diviana. According to legend, the divinely gifted Diviana will one day overthrow the Blessa and restore the Drivian king to his rightful throne. But with the search having lasted for more than 400 years, will the Diviana ever come to light? Willow is the slave of the Raskpil family. But at the age of four, 20 years have passed since her life irrevocably changed. Her existence is no worse than any other slave. But within, Willow wonders if there isn't something more she should be doing with her life other than serving the ungrateful. Ordered to travel with her master's family to Sondertoft so her master's adult children can take part in an ancient rite of passage, Willow is shocked when she learns that she too must participate. Will she fail as all before her half? Will she rise to the challenge and become stronger after passing through the flames? From the Flames, Episode 12 Continuing to move her hand along the engraving, something within her told her that she'd seen this pattern before. But not on a ship. For without being told, Willow knew that this ship and her unique carvings were one of a kind, never to be duplicated again. A breeze fluttered around her, brushing her dress around her legs. When Willow looked down to straighten her skirt, her eyes were drawn to the embroidery the amazing gold-threaded needlework which decorated her clothing. With a small gasp, she looked back at the ship and realized the design was the same. Yes, the design of the ship was larger and more intricate. However, Willow could pick up the same pattern, the same flawless curves, the same beautiful attention to detail. Amazing, she breathed, her hand lifting to trace the hull again. But her hand never made it, for Hawk came up to her side. Come, there are people I want you to meet. Stepping back, she saw two men and a woman on the ship by the gangplank waiting for them. Taking the lead, Hawk walked up the gangplank a few steps before turning around. He held out a hand to Willow, guiding her onto the ship. Once on board, he turned to the crew, who stood waiting to be introduced. Mistress Willow, I would like to introduce you to the crew of the Farulf. This is Ezrin, indicating a man with long black hair. Natsal, a man with short brown hair. And Lofen the sole woman with a shaved head. Everyone, this is Mistress Willow, Hawk said, finishing the introductions. Bowing their heads, they all respectively murmured, Mistress. After a second, they lifted their heads and looked at her for guidance. Willow, not knowing what to do, looked to Hawk for assistance. With a plea in her eyes, she wanted to tell him she didn't know what to do, that she was completely out of her element, but she couldn't say the words out loud. She hoped and prayed to the gods that the hopeless look in her eyes would tell him what she needed. That hope was misplaced. Hawk only looked blankly back at her, waiting for her to take the lead. What does he want me to say? Why won't he help me? Realizing he wasn't going to help her, she turned to Val. What am I supposed to do? Tell them that we need to set sail immediately because people are looking for you, Val said, as if it were obvious. Clearing her throat, she said, We need to set sail immediately. People from the town are hunting for me, and I would prefer to be far from here. The crew quickly moved the second she finished speaking. Natsal and Azrin ran to the stern and began hoisting the man-sized steel anchor aboard. Lofen ran and began unfurling the large, light brown square sails. Also moving, Hawk ordered, Set sail for Henfrid! We shall be safe there! Catching Willow's look of confusion, he said, Mistress Astrid lives there, and her home is protected from both the Blessa and the Driva. Only those loyal to you can enter her land. Willow moved out of the way of the working crew. Once the anchor was aboard, the men grabbed long poles and pushed against the shore. 
The mixture of sand and gravel scraped the hull and keel, unwilling to release the ship from its clinging depths. The men pushed harder, finally forcing the beach to free the ship. Once free, the ship sailed without hindrance, cutting through the seas as easily as a knife through butter. Willow felt the crisp sea breeze blow through her hair. She basked in the unencumbered sunlight, feeling truly warm and safe for the first time since she'd arrived on Sondertoft's dock to the frosty reception. The bluffs, the same bluffs she'd seen on her first ship ride to Sondertoft, slipped by. This time, however, she noticed isolated farms on top of them. Some of the homes hung dangerously close to the bluff's edge. The only thing preventing them from plunging into the sea was a few feet of land and the blessings of the gods. Other homes she could see only the very top of. These homeowners respected the sea's ability to destroy the bluff in an instant and didn't want to taunt the temperamental sea gods. The farther they traveled, the more she noticed. Fishing boats drifted back to shore, disappearing into hidden coves, tiny islands consisting of a single tree, birds of every size and shape flying across the sky, cawing messages back and forth between them. In the water, there were tiny and large animals alike. They were too far away to see properly. But every once in a while, Willow thought she saw a large fin slicing through the water and wondered what manner of beast it belonged to. After a while, Hawk returned to Willow's side. The trip to Henfred will take about two days. Once you reach Henfred, Mistress Astrid will be able to help you learn about your powers. She will also be able to advise you on how to locate the sacred objects, which you must find to complete your quest. Her family has been studying and learning all about the Diviana and their quest for many generations. Ask the boy if his Astrid is at all related to the two sorceresses who created me. I seem to remember that one of them was named Astrid as well, Val asked. Is your mistress related to the two sorceresses who created the sacred objects and Val? Willow asked. Yes, Hawk answered with a smile. She is. She's a gifted sorceress in her own right. However, the ancient parchment tells of how your magical gifts shall be greater than any sorcerer, living or dead. But if I'm so powerful, why couldn't I stop those men who were hunting me? Willow asked in a small voice, looking out to the sea to hide the doubt in her eyes. Shouldn't I have been able to do something other than run away? What good am I if all I can do is build a ship and make Val transform when I'm angry? How will I ever be able to stop the armies of Blessa and return our king to his rightful throne? I don't have all the answers, Hawk said quietly. Your questions are insightful. However, they are also beyond my knowledge. When we reach Henfred, perhaps Mistress Astrid will be able to answer them. Willow huffed in frustration. Her mind was so full of unanswered questions that she didn't know what to think. Hawk smiled as if knowing how she felt. I know how frustrating it is when you have questions and nobody can answer them. For now, push them out of your mind. None of us knows what the future holds, so why worry? We are safe and that is all that matters at the present. As for the rest, Hawk didn't finish. Shrugging his shoulders, he bowed his head and left Willow to gaze out into the sea. The boy's right, you know, Val said. You need to stop worrying so much and let things happen. I know that you have great magic within you. I can sense it. The more you worry about it, however, the harder it will be to have it come forth. For now, relax. Enjoy the time you have on the ship. Worry when there's something to worry about. Willow's mind resisted. She didn't want to relax and let things come as they would. She didn't want to wait for the future to just happen. She wanted, no needed, to do something. She'd been given these mystical gifts, and everyone seemed so sure she'd be able to use them to save them. But what were they? And how was she supposed to relax with people hunting her? Yes, they were safe right now, but that would change, and then what? She couldn't do anything to stop a few men, let alone armies. You're worrying again, Val said, breaking into the endless questions and tormenting thoughts which swirled around her head. Relax. But I see no relaxation in my future, she whispered. Then you're going to wear yourself out and give yourself wrinkles. Do you think people want to be saved by a wrinkly young woman? No. So give it up. Once the wrinkles come, then you start getting rheumatism. Everything goes downhill from there. Willow laughed. Her fears and worries pushed back at the picture Val was painting. Yeah, 
Can you imagine a 24-year-old hunched over with an even older stick? (laughs) Watch who you're calling old, Granny. Shuffling from one place to another. Her laughter rang out, making the danger-filled morning disappear from the memory of all who heard it. This work is released under Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike License. Do what you want with it. Remix it, re-record it, transcribe it, share it. Just don't sell it or change the terms of the license. Your creation must be released under an Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike License. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.